We're moving right along catching the TGV to Paris. It's the high-speed French train and it's super deluxe, super comfortable, and there's some wonderful scenery along the way. Sit back and relax and enjoy this smooth, comfortable ride. And now when you're riding on the TGV First Class, they have a lunch included. It's a delicious hot meal. Next stop, Paris. We spend three days and nights here in this beautiful city, the capital of France. Arriving at the Gare de Lyon, it's always a very busy scene here at this major train station. A taxi takes us from the train station down through the busy streets of the city, heading towards our hotel for check-in. Notice all the bicycles for rent. Paris was really the pioneer in urban bicycle rentals, and now cities all over the world have copied them, and it's really successful. But we're just moving along in our taxi, heading to our hotel, and then we'll be going out for a walk. Driving along the busy Rue de Rivoli, this is really one of the main shopping streets in Paris. It's over a mile long. We're staying at the very convenient Cidadine Léal, which recently was renovated. It's right in the heart of the first arrondissement. It helps a lot to select a hotel in the center, walking distance to many of the attractions of the city. Leaving our hotel on the first walking tour to discover Paris, right around the corner we find the Fountain of the Innocents in this busy Léal pedestrian neighborhood. Passing the Pompidou Center and the Stravinsky Fountains, a very whimsical ensemble of modern architecture. And from here we stroll just a couple of more blocks to the City Hall of Paris, the majestic Hôtel de Ville, and on to Notre Dame Cathedral. We were so fortunate there was a mass going on with beautiful spiritual music. After Notre Dame, we take a walk down the Ile Saint-Louis and along the banks of the River Seine, locks on the bridge. This is a new tradition in Europe to prove your love to your sweetheart. You lock it and throw the key away. In the Latin Quarter, you're going to find lots and lots of restaurants all packed into these narrow alleyways. And one of the better deals is the Greek food. We are taking a walk into the Marais district, which is a real popular evening spot for cafes and restaurants and lots of locals out here, a few tourists. Very safe, very clean, very interesting in the Marais. As we look up one of my favorite crepe stains in town, Grand Marnier, chocolate sauce, sugar, anything you like, 40 different kinds of crepes here. Well, the creperie is an essential Paris institution and you really should have at least one or two or more when you're in Paris. You can get a sweet crepe with chocolate or sugar and Grand Marnier. You can get a cheese crepe, a ham and cheese, savory, all different varieties of crepes. And it's nice when they make them fresh right in front of your eyes that way instead of pulling them off of a big stack. Chez Marianne is one of the great restaurants in town. They specialize in falafel sandwiches, very reasonably priced. Ah, the Marais at night. It's just so much fun to take a stroll, enjoy the sights, and listen to the music. Walk down these little narrow lanes and it really doesn't take very long to cover the Marais in the evening. An hour, two hours, and you've seen most of it, especially on a weekend. The opera is very much the center of Paris. Several grand boulevards radiate out from the Place de l'Opera. Behind the opera, you have the main department stores of the city, the Galeries Lafayette. The interior is a national historic landmark. It's about 100 years old. And you can see why they call it galleries with these little balconies overlooking the main rotunda. And towering over it all is a beautiful stained glass dome. And the subway will get you from one side of town to the other in about 10 or 15 minutes. One of the great small art 
museums in Paris is L'Orangerie. It's not as well known as the Louvre and the Orsay, but it's got a wonderful small collection, Impressionist, Post-Impressionist, Monet's Nymphia, and it's located right at the Tuileries Gardens. And then we take a stroll through the Tuileries Gardens. They're located right along the banks of the River Seine. The first gardens on this site were built in the 1560s for Catherine de' Medici. It's been continuously open as a public park. It's a beautiful spot right in the center of town. It's between the Place de la Concorde and the Louvre Museum. The Tuileries is one of the most popular spots for Parisians to come on any sunny afternoon. Just sit back and relax, talk with friends, read a book. It's a beautiful formal public gardens. There's no charge for admission to the Tuileries. Well, nearby, let's have lunch at a traditional French brasserie. This restaurant was wonderful. La Mousset, very typical Parisian place. There's locals in here, there's tourists in here. The service was very good, very friendly. Food was delicious, duck on skewer there. And the price was quite reasonable for this wonderful lunch. And another example of a typical local restaurant just further down Rue Saint-Honoré, L'Auberge de Louvre, a great place for lunch or dinner. Here too you've got a nice mix of locals eating as well as some tourists. Very good service, very attentive waiters and waitresses in here, and great food at L'Auberge de Louvre. Right now is a good time for the classic one-hour boat ride. You can catch the boat right here down the steps of the Pont Neuf on the tip of the island. We'll show you many great buildings and monuments from the perspective of the river. And the Orsay Museum, the home of the French Impressionists. Many wonderful views of the different landmarks, but undoubtedly the most spectacular of all views is of the Eiffel Tower. It really looks wonderful at sunset. You can sit indoors or outdoors. The boat ride is especially wonderful at twilight when the buildings along the Seine are illuminated by spotlights. One of the best deals in town, it only costs about 10 to 15 dollars and the boats leave every half hour. Next morning it's time to leave. We're heading up to London for the final destination of our tour. We're leaving Paris. We've had three full days and nights here. We've done a lot. We've accomplished everything on our list. So now it's time to go. We're off to London. So now we're boarding the Eurostar train that will take us in just three hours from the center of Paris right into the heart of London. We go by the Eurostar, the beautiful fast new train that goes under the English Channel. Well, the scenery keeps on gliding by. They've managed to shorten this train ride even further with new tracks in England. So it's really only about two and a half hours from Paris to London by Eurostar. <laughs>